Good afternoon everybody. It is Saturday, July 6th, and today I wanted to do a video on growing watermelon. I've been growing watermelon the past two years, and I've been trying to find a way to grow watermelon in really tight spaces. I feel that a lot of home gardeners avoid growing watermelon because they feel that it takes a ton of space to grow watermelon, and that is only partially true. In reality, you only need a little bit of dirt to grow watermelon. The root system is really compact. The problem is they sprawl all over the place and they take up a lot of space on the vines. Last year, I experimented growing watermelon on a dirt hill to save some space. And I'll link to that video above, but what I did was I took some fire brick and I built a circle and I dumped a few bags of topsoil and compost right in the middle of the lawn and I put a couple of watermelon plants uh, in that hill. And the plants grew very well, but there was a problem associated with that method. Because the watermelon were sprawled out all over the lawn, they were getting absolutely ravaged by cucumber beetles. So I wanted to try and find a better way and to take what I did last year and I wanted to improve on that. And the first thing I did was I took 20 gallon felt grow bags that I've used last year to grow tomatoes in with great success and I decided I wanted to grow watermelon in the 20 gallon grow bags. Uh, the grow bags are plenty large enough for watermelon uh, for the root system and I have two right here. Right here I have two sugar babies growing in this grow bag and over here I have a larger watermelon called a Nancy watermelon. I have one single uh, plant there and this is, uh, this is an heirloom variety that I tried growing last year. So in these two 20 gallon grow bags I have three plants in total and I'll show you what kind of production I have. Here is one of the Nancy watermelon that's growing out of this one 20 gallon grow bag and this is probably going to be the last year I grow this variety it's just not very precocious I'm not getting very much fruit set with them but I'm having great luck with these sugar baby seeds that I bought uh, from Burpee they were just on the shelf at Walmart I think they were something like two dollars for the pack and these two plants are giving me a ton of fruit here you can see one and two really nice sized watermelon uh, three actually three back there so there's three on this side my largest is over here this is probably this has to be at least three pounds by now and growing and you'll see another one that's growing up on my fence as a trellis and uh, you're seeing all kinds of little baby watermelon that are starting all over the place so watermelon uh, fun fact, they are a cucurbit. They're in the same family as cucumbers, squash, and uh, pumpkins. So with watermelon, there is a male and a female flower. And I'll show you over here. When, when watermelon first form, you can see the, the end right there. That little end right here was at one point a flower. Every single female flower has a little tiny watermelon or cucumber or squash attached to it, if you're growing cucumber or squash. And then there are male flowers. This is a male flower. It's nothing but strictly a pollinator. The overwhelming majority of flowers on your watermelon, cucumber, and squash plants are going to be male flowers. And they open, and that's where the male pollen is. And ooh, look, here's a little tiny baby female flower they usually open up in the morning or in the evening. So right now or in the afternoon, they're all closed. But the bee flies from the male flower to the female flower and pollinates. And if the female flower is not pollinated, you will come up with this. That right there is a watermelon that aborted. The flower on the end did not get pollinated by a pollinator. And if you wanted to, if you wanted really crazy fruit set, you can buy a little mascara brush and wait for your flowers to open. And you can go from male flower to female flower, back and forth again, and you can pollinate your own fruits and have tremendous fruit set. 
So I learned a few things this year. I learned that growing the watermelon in containers is an absolutely fantastic idea. The el these elevated fabric grow bags provide great drainage, great aeration for the roots, and they stay moist for quite a while, believe it or not. So I'm getting, I'm getting fantastic fruit set with this sugar baby. You can see there are melons all over the place. Not such great fruit set with this Nancy watermelon. But that's okay, I'll have to just find varieties that do better in my climate. At least I know I have one winner. That's just you being a gardener, you have to find what seeds do best in your climate. So I'm, I'm one for two. Uh, what my big improvement was this year was growing them on this weed barrier. And I have featured this weed barrier in some of my other videos. I'm growing my figs on there and they're just growing like weeds from all of the heat that this black plastic is attracting. And I will make sure to place a link in the description to this weed barrier, but it's, a, it's just a, a simple, inexpensive weed barrier I bought off of Amazon. This weed barrier has been absolutely incredible for keeping pests away from all of my plants. And I don't know if it's just because pests don't like going where there's no grass because they like to hide in the shade or something, or if it just collects a whole lot of heat and all of the heat just keeps the pests away, but it has been absolutely fantastic at keeping bugs and beetles and hoppers and things away from my garden. My grass is absolutely crawling with leaf hoppers and beetles and there's just none to be found around the plant. Whereas last year they were getting chewed up by cucumber beetles and the beetles were spreading viruses and infections and I was having a terrible time growing them. So I'm having fantastic luck this year. The only other thing I've been doing is um, in dry spells I've been taking a small amount of, of powder, like a seven dust, the anti-insect dust, and placing them strategically on a few leaves here and there uh, because beetles tend to hop from leaf to leaf. You don't need to cover the whole plant. Don't get it anywhere near the flowers. You can just cover one out of every 15 leaves or so and the beetles will jump in it and, and they'll get sick and die. But I'm having great luck doing this and I would recommend you do the same. So check out the video description. I will show you where to buy these fabric grow bags. I will link to a video as to how I make my potting soil to fill them up. And I will link to where to get this weed barrier. But you can see in how little space right here I'm growing so many watermelon. So as a backyard gardener you can grow a number of plants and get a tremendous amount of fruit set in a very very small area. You don't need a lot of space to grow watermelon, contrary to popular belief. So that is my brief overview for how to grow watermelon in fabric containers in a small space for the backyard gardener. I know that this overview was pretty brief, so if you have any questions, please feel free to post the questions in the comments below, and I will answer them as best as I can. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for future updates and more videos like these. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all again next time.